Hi everyone, in this video, what we're going to do is a small demonstration and not only a demonstration, we're going to show the code of one of four solutions. It's a prototype, but we got a lot of, um, it got a good reception. So we showed this prototype in one of the past meetups. I think it was like a few months ago. And after that, um, not only us uh, got the request for like to see how it works, but also DevExpress. So here below, you can see like the conversation with Dennis, where he's telling, okay, like you have this type of solution if you want to expose your data as an API. And one of the solutions that he mentioned is ours. So uh, that's why we decided to share this code. Uh, we will make it open source and we will explain how it works because it's kind of simple, but you need to know, understand how ASP.NET Core works. So, uh, let me show you, Javier, what we have here. So basically, um, we have a simple SAF application. It's a normal SAF Blazor application. There is nothing special on it. But we have like three classes that we need to implement in order to make an API out of a SAF Blazor application. So let's start with the first one, which is a service. As you know, .NET Core and Blazor in general, they use the pattern of dependency injection. So basically you can inject classes um, in, in your controllers. So this is our service basically. We call it object space service and implement an interface with only like one property and one method. So the property is an enumerable of types. So you can register the types that you want to expose. It's not necessary to expose all the types, just the types that you want. And a method to create an object space. So the implementation is also quite simple. Here we have in the constructor, the enumerable of types, and then we have the connection string to basically create an object space provider. So that's it. And then we have the implementation in the method where the object space provider just returns a new object space. So after having this, we will use um, .NET Core dependency injection to include this in our controllers. So let me show you how we register the, the service. Basically, we have it here, like we add a singleton, uh, we register the interface, and then we register basically the, um, the object space service. And we pass the list of types and the connection string that we want to, to use. And also here we have the list of types that we're registering. So in this case, we're going to expose domain object two. Now that we have a register type in our dependency service, then what we need to create is a controller. So here we have a controller, it's called my test controller. Uh, I know that the name is not too intuitive, but we show it like this on the video. So we wanted to keep the name just for that. Now, um, here we have, it, the controller requires the I object space service that we just created. So we inject it in the constructor and we keep it like in the field on the class. And then it's like quite simple. You just have the get method. And as you can see, it receives like um, only a few parameters like the property list. Those are the names of the properties that you want to expose in your JSON. Then the name of the type. Um, so the name of the domain object for like, in this case we will use domain object two that is the only type that we have in here, and then the criteria, a string to create the criteria. So after that, basically with the service that we have, we create an object space, and then we check if the type is registered. So after that, what we do is like, basically we create a SAF data view. So the object space, uh, one of the methods of the object space is create data view. So for that, you pass the type, the list of properties that you want to show and the criteria. And there is like an opportunity for extension here because we can add also sorting. In this case, I pass null, but you can implement that after you get a copy of the source. You just add one more parameter here and then you pass uh, the sorting property here. So um, after that, um, basically what you need to do is like you have the view. And then with the view, you just put it in a list of objects. Uh, and that list of objects, then you serialize it to JSON. 
and that will create the output um, in the browser or you can use Postman or whatever. In the, in the video that we have before, like from the, from the stand-up, uh, we use post, uh, Postman. But in this case, we're going to use like basically um, just the browser. And for that I have prepared, I think I have it here. Um, da, da, da. Coach, a few things to mention while you are mm -hmm. uh, looking for that is mm -hmm. that we have the, the concept of injecting the, the object space through the mm -hmm. object space service, but we could also use the ISAF application provider. That's a service that comes with the SAF laser that you can use that application provider to take to get your application to create the object space. So that would be also another way to. Yeah, actually, actually, it can go basically both ways in the sense that it doesn't matter how you create the object space in general. What you need to do is to be able to create, to handle an object space inside of a controller. And that way is that talking about the controllers and the APIs, there are some of them that are private somehow. And for that, we have this ticket here. Oh, let me. Um, yeah, it's, this. yeah, it's good to show that when you are creating your controller, the standard route for ASP.NET Core uh, Web API, they will select that route API and the name of the controller. So in our case, it's uh, my test controller, but in this case, you shouldn't use something like singing controller, sign out controller, challenge controller, retry login controller, because if you see here, those routes are already processed by the SAF application. So you should not uh, do that because it will conflict. Yeah, and actually this is kind of tricky. I mean, you have to go through the problem to know it because mm -hmm. it's still not documented somehow because it's, I mean, South Blazor is kind of new in that sense. So let's, let me see the application is running here. So let's log in. I want to show you how simple the application is. So basically uh, we just have a domain object, domain object two, and we have like three, three properties and let's create a new object here. So this will be named will be demo, uh, API demo and hello world will be this one. And let's save this. Okay, so, so far we have like two records on the SAF application. Now what we need to do is basically, let's copy the URL, put it in another window and let's delete this and it's going to be um, API API uh, my test uh, my test which is the controller mm -hmm. then you pass the parameters so as you can see I tried that before so that's why you, we have the URLs there so see you have the property list in this case we're going to show the OID and the description and then you have the type parameter and for the type we're going to pass to main object two. So if we do this, uh, I see in the breakpoint. So it went into the controller and see we have the property list is going to show OID and description and the type is domain object two. And in this case, we're going to show everything. We don't, uh, we didn't pass any criteria. So when we run this, basically voilà. we have um, a JSON. So this is like a super easy way to expose your application, your data. So in the past for this, I mean, we used to use all data, remember Javier? So it was like a good solution, but you need to have uh, another project, uh, make sure how your ORM is working. And you know, data, there are like few things that are really, really tricky. And this is like kind of really simple way. So here we have basically the two records that we have in the, in the application and let's add a new record. So this will be me, Jose Manuel Ojeda, and this will be description, um, a programmer. And again, hello world. So say, unless- and just... be, Because we are asking for the OID and the description, it will be the OID and uh, hello world, and a programmer. Yeah, actually, exactly. So um, let's, um, find a place to make this peer uh, format JSON. So let's paste this here. 
And nice. see, these are the values. So basically within like three small classes and a few lines of code, maybe less than 50 lines, you have a whole API. And the good thing about this is that this is just a regular controller. So even in the, in the example, we have this, the JWT authentication attribute. So if you put this attribute, it will execute uh, the, the on action executing. So in here, if you can pass a header, you can basically add authentication. So uh, this is, I mean, part of the ASP.NET Core type of infrastructure. You can basically validate any type of header that you send. So you just create an action filter attribute and then you put it in top of the controller. And after that, voila, like you have an API in a few lines, basically. The only thing that Javier said that you need to be aware is the reserved names. So we're going to post all uh, these two tickets also because it's uh, good that you know them, that you have like uh, some reserved words like API sign in, sign out. And that happened to me also. I, I remember that I used some reserved names and it didn't work. And I was thinking, what is happening? Because I tried to make a more like uh, comprehensive name. But in the end, I returned it to my test because we wanted to keep the same name as, as that we show in the video from before. So that's basically it. Um, we're going to put the link of the source in the description of the video. And if you have any doubts, like you can just send us an email or information will be at the beginning of the video anyway. So uh, any other thing that you want to add, Javier? No, that's pretty much it. I think that this is a really neat solution. It's already inside your SaaS Blazor application. So there is no other project, there is no other solution. It's right there with your uh, regular SAF application. And if you see, just with one controller, you are exposing your ORM right away. Any property, any type. So thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video. Bye.